continuing with the yesterday sum first of all, before we go to the one that you had to sketch for homework. First of all, I said now you've got to estimate your answers from your graphs. First question was, where are the graphs uh, intersecting or equal? And that is a nice easy one. In other questions, it will not be this easy. You'll have to estimate it's over there that they intersect, so it's approximately 205 or whatever. Mm -hmm. So there's going to be leniency where you got your answer. It was exactly at 45 degrees and 225. Right. So your answers were 2045 or 225. Right. Only there because this is the only space that has been sketched. Then I'm asking my next question. Where is the one graph, F, the orange one, smaller than the yellow one? Now you did this last year as well. Let's see if you can still remember. Where is the orange graph smaller than the yellow one means? Where is the orange one? Below. So the orange smaller than the yellow means the orange one is below. In the section that you sketched it. So you start from wherever your sketch started and we see it's yellow at the top and orange at the bottom. Up to 45. So between the interval of negative 45 and positive 45, how do we write that? Negative 45, smaller than, smaller than, positive 45. The question said they can also be equal to each other. So, are they equal to 45? Yes. So can I include that? Yes. Negative 45. No. Why not? Because there's an asymptote. So one of them doesn't even exist. So it can't be included for that one. So now we're getting nitty gritty. Excluded, included. For the next one, we've got also, still we've got code, we've got to continue. It's yellow at the top and orange at the bottom. Then it's yellow at the bottom, orange at the top. That's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for yellow at the top. So where does that happen again? From 135 to 225, and then until the end, the yellow is at the bottom. So it's between 135 and 225. And again we write or now we should be able to include everything but we don't because there's an asymptote do we include the 135 no because no, it's an asymptote but the 225 we do because there they are actually equal the question says where is the orange below the yellow or equal the equal is there at 225 excluded into very specific then I'm doing number 10 first because it's quicker and I'm going to get to number 9 just now. For gx smaller than 0, what does it mean? G is the yellow graph. What does it mean if I'm looking for the graph smaller than 0? Remember that this represents your y value. gx is always your y value. So in the yellow graph, where is the y below the x-axis? The negative Good. side. Are you with me? In plain English? Where is the yellow graph below the x-axis? That's what you should understand about it. So where is the yellow graph below the x-axis? That would be from 45 to 30, 135. And from 225 to 215. That's the question. You've got to realize what I'm asking you. Where is the one below? So tell me the intersect or in intervals there. It's from 45 up to... 135 in or out? In. Oh, fantastic sum. It says exclude, so I'm not even looking for anything else. If it said included, this would have both been included, wouldn't it? Yes. This one also? No. Are you busy with the yellow one? Yes. Nothing said about the orange one. Nothing done with the asymptotes. So you're including both of them. It's got nothing to do with the table graph, which has an asymptote. And the next piece was from 135? 220. Sorry, 225 up to? And again, both of them are excluded because the sum said exclude. If it said include, you would have in... Why did I include it? Oh, man. I just saw it. Okay. Both of them excluded. I was saying, if it was... Oh, yes, that's what I was saying, and then I did it wrong. If it was included, you would have included both of them. If it was excluded, you don't include any of them. Even if this is an asymptote, but it's not an asymptote for this graph, and you're only looking at this graph. 
Now we come to the more difficult stuff. You did that last year as well, and I know that you struggled with it. So that's just about the, the most, most difficult question I can ask you. I'm going to erase this just now to show you. I'm asking where the orange graph times the yellow graph gives me a zero. Less than. Less than. What does that mean? Sign negative. is negative. Where the sign is negative. When I time the two and I get a negative answer. Now, like I told you yes, last year, or you were told last year, if you time two things and you want to get a negative, what must the two signs be to get to a negative? One positive, one negative. Which one? It doesn't matter. One must be positive, one must be negative. So in plain English it means the one graph, where's the graph positive and negative? Below the x-axis is negative, above the x-axis is positive. So I'm actually looking for where the one graph is above the x-axis while the other one is below. So I have a look at this sketch there. I'm erasing this for a minute. So where is the one? above and one below below the x-axis so let's have a look at the sketch above and below yes i was hearing something but it happens all the time doesn't it yes well the yellow one is at the top the orange one is at the bottom then it flips and the orange one is at the bottom uh, the yellow one is at the bottom and the orange one is at the top yes. so where does this happen that they get but to a negative answer all the time all the time yes. yeah. all the but how do i write all the time you for which values of x will this happen for x from negative 45 up to in other words my domain that they've given to me from negative 45 up to 315 and, and since they've given me that answer in interval notation, oh, I don't know, I just write it like that. Now, if the sum had said not equal, I'd have to change this. It was equal, so that's fine. It means that the answer when I time them can also be zero or negative. One above, one below, or then one of them can be zero, so it makes my answer a zero. So, because in that point, the two y values timed is zero. And that's fine smaller or equal to zero. But if I just for ask for smaller than, I would have to exclude all of these points. Because that all of those points have a y value of zero, which makes the y value, when you time it with the other one's y value, equal to zero, and I don't want it equal to zero. zero. So if that wasn't equal, you'd have to say everything but not the 45, 45, 135, what, 225, and the 3, 1. But, and you can write it like that. Or you can go in intervals and say, from there to there, exclude, exclude. From there to there, exclude, exclude. From there to there, exclude. So it takes too long. I do this and say, excluding, and you name those four points. Right. Okay, so your homework sum. We're going to go and sketch these two graphs, and then we're going to complete these questions for every one of them again. So four sin x over 2 what do you need to know what you must do is this a boy transformation or a girl transformation mm -hmm. it's a girl something to do with the x but what are you going to do with that x you're going to time it with two the other way around than what you see there in front of you so you're going to time it by two what's going to happen to your graph time it with two okay so you're going to time it there. I'm going to make mine orange. All the time, use your colors. colors. So you can have two different colors. And when I talk about where's the yellow yes. above and the green one and the blue one or whatever, you understand what I'm asking. Yes. So for the sin graph, then I go to my mother graph of sin. And I'm going to take each and every one of the one, two, three, four, five points that you must know off by heart. And I'm going to apply this. First thing I'm going to do is, at zero, take the x and time it with two. Gives zero, zero. Still gives me zero. So that point is still going to be at zero. zero. The next one would be with the x was 90. I had a one. Now my x must be 180. 180 and a one. Okay. What's happening to this thing? It's stretching it's enormous. Where's the next one going to be? Kind of. At 360. 
which I don't even have here, yes. which would be somewhere over there. And if you want to draw it and then later on erase it, it's fine, but at least you can see your shape now. But you are not allowed to leave it like that. You have got to show me that it stops. Stops where? At 2, Seven. 70. And I showed you yesterday. How do I find out what those coordinates there are? That would be at 270. And what is about why that would be? So take your calculator and hit the press in. Send 270 over 2 and work out the answer, please. Show all endpoints, all turning points, or x and y intersects. All the points of importance in any graph, parabolas, etc. You're going to have to do that. But I'm not finished because I need to go to negative 90. Where would the next point have been here on the negative side? At negative 90, it would have been negative 1. But that's now going to be only at 1. 80. So this thing is stretched even off the board, off the video. But you need to go down and see. now I'm going somewhere over here. Show my orange graph going down again. Well, I know what this point is here again. Yes. How? Use a calculator. Calculator. Pressing negative 90 there over 2. And your answer is? Negative 0,6. Yeah. Because of symmetry. Graph plus symmetrical shapes all the time. Can I see the x-intercept? Well, there's only one. Yes, I can see it. And the y is the same x-intercept. Can I see the turning point? I don't need to go right there that it's 180 and 1. But you can if you want to. But otherwise, it gets too cluttered after a while if there's too many things happening there. Done. How many marks for such a graph? About three or four. One graph. Now, I've still got to do the other one, which was that. Cars graph, and with this cars graph, which I'm going to do in yellow, what am I going to do? Minus 45. Every x must be minus with 45. So the graph, when I'm minus with 45, is going to go shrink. Left. Left. It's not going to shrink. It's going to pick itself up and move to the left. So every single point you take your x and you minus with 45 from your cars graph. Mother graph. So on that point, the x value was zero. So you move it to negative forty. Oh, I'm on the wrong place. Sorry. It was at one. It's still at one, but it's now moved forty-five to the left. This is at zero. It moves forty-five to the left, and it gets to forty-five. You see the cos graph. Yes. That used to be there is now there. Next point, which used to be at, I'm going to do with the cost graph, I'm sorry, used to be at 180, negative 1 is now going to be at 135, and negative 1. Next one should have been at 270, it's now going to be at 225, and the next one should have been at 360, it's now going to be at 315, which is somewhere over there on the other board again. But I know I'm going up, and not quite the yet. So it's going to go downwards, showing my cos graph, and upwards here. And I know it's going to go down here again, a little bit off the chart there, but I'm going to stop at 90. So can I get that point? And can I get that point specifically there? Put it into your calculator, please tell me there. What is cos of 270 plus 45? Cos 270 plus 45? Um, zero. I mean zero point zero. Okay, it's exactly looked like it on my board. Lucky I was. And it's on the exact same space. And on this side, that should be again. If you put in a minus 90 there, negative zero. No. Zero comma or oh, negative. Could have a negative. Zero comma? Seven again. So there you've got it now. Make sure you've got the correct one. Please complete the questions for this specific one tomorrow.